but all the international media, especially the U.S., paved the way that Mubarak is stepping down tonight. So I went down with my camera to Tahrir, and I had all the expectations of filming victorious Egyptian people, my generation and other generations, rejoicing. And, and Mubarak came and gave a very silly and provocative speech saying that he understands and it's going to be better. And there was one sentence he said that provoked me the most. Uh, I, I think he said, uh, one day I was a young man like you. And it's, it just, it, I just couldn't take it anymore. I said, this man really doesn't understand. <laughs> he, he's not getting it. <laughs> Nothing is reaching out to him. So I switched off my camera, I gave it to a colleague, and I decided I am going to be a protester right now. And there was a very small group of, of people who said, whispered to each other, Maspiru, which is a TV building. And it was a group of like maybe 100 or 50 people. To me, the moment was just, uh, the history is repeating itself. All the revolution movement now is contained in Tahrir Square, and Mubarak once doesn't care, and he can keep Tahrir Square just going on like this. And there were, the media was talking about Tahrir Square becoming Hyde Park and a place for uh, free expression. And people were started to go back to work, and life was becoming normal again in Egypt. And then there was the Egyptian stock market and all the pressures for the stock market to back, go back to work again. And I felt that we are losing, we are going to lose. We have to escalate, we have to push it forward. So there were two, group, two small groups. I was with the group that went to Maspiru, and another group went to the presidential palace in Heliopolis, where the president lives. And I think this was very important. I think it made a big difference. Uh, I stayed there for three or four hours, and after four hours, there was 5,000 people there. And when we reached 5,000, I went back to work as a journalist. I said, they don't need me anymore. <laughs> it's OK. It's going to be bigger. I think the first milestone was uh, when Omar Suleiman came and said, Mubarak will step down. I think I was, um, everything that was happening in Egypt was just too much for me. <clears throat> I mean. Things were happening, but they were not sinking in. <laughs> like, you know, we were reporting, we were covering, I was managing a big crew, you know, writing and filming. And, but it took a lot of time for things, to, for me to really feel what was happening and like understand it. But I think one of the most striking things personally, like between me and myself, was when Habib al-Adli, the Minister of Interior, was put behind bars, I was not happy. I did not feel satisfied. I did not feel that even when Mubarak was put behind bars and the whole world was watching his trial, I don't feel happy. I don't feel that's it. I feel we are not there yet. I feel it's not over. There is a game that's happening. There is a military, uh, and it's monopoly over power. Um, the human rights situation is better, but it's not what I worked for, and it's not what I dreamed of. The press, still, you cannot, I mean, yes, we are witnessing uh, unprecedented era where you know, you can write opinion pieces about the army and you can criticize how the army is managing the country, but still there are, there are publishing bans and some things will not pass. Uh, you cannot say what you want. Some people get arrested for writing on blogs or get questioned uh, for tweets. They get questioned by the military police for tweeting. So I went through a state of shock to a state of disbelief. But now I am more in a state of optimism and dissatisfaction at the same time. I'm not happy with what we have. We can go more. We can do more. We can achieve more.